Uh, first one is a little silly thing on what's known as Bernoulli's theorem. Bernoulli's theorem talks about if the pressure, if the velocity of air goes up, the pressure goes down. It's a standard way of explaining lots of different phenomena. I use it just to show that air exists. And also, it's, it's nice because it's kind of counterintuitive. So I blow air in there, let's turn it around like that. What do you think happens with two hands? Yeah. You've never seen this well, before. So what happens with two hands? They're going to go away. Of course they move away. What else would Obviously. you do? So you blow between them. Actually, is there a straw there? What yes. a little bit better. Give me the biggest straw you can. Biggest straw, my hand straw. They'll do just perfect. Open. So of course it blows, it no, goes no, apart because all the molecules are in there and you're pushing them and they're going to go out like that. And then That's sponsorship right there. Yeah. That's what? That's sponsorship right there. Yeah. Oh, well, he's a McDonald's. <laughs> Physics well. teachers eat McDonald's. Here we go. One, two, Brain. three. Whoa. Oh, wow. Right, you want to save some of them now, don't overdo it. Can you go again? Oh. <laughs> and then it goes. So what you're explaining here is the notion that uh, the air exists because there's so much air going higgly piggly in all different directions that doesn't move. That's fine. If higgly piggly will do just fine. <laughs> if some of the molecules that are going out in that direction are forced to travel in that direction, then they no longer shush out. And instead, all the molecules that are going in this direction, even though some are going that way, the ones that are hitting more off of it, are more, there's more pressure on it in that direction due to the molecules than there is in that direction. And as a result, the two guys going like that. Silly, but yet rather effective if you're teaching the fact that there is air all around. Uh, similar one here, this is to do with water. Once again, this is to show that, in this case, we just stick with Bernoulli's theorem. As the velocity increases, the pressure decreases. So it's a ping pong ball into a funnel, no big deal. Get the water going, no big, no big deal. But a ping pong ball, in this case it's a colored ping pong ball, so you can see it. And there you go, and it's there. Wow. Because we've got molecules pressing up, molecules pressing down, not only does the steam amount going up and down, and gravity is also going down, so the object moves down. But in this case, there aren't enough of water molecules going down because they're being forced over to the side. So there's not enough going down because overcome the gravity going down and to overcome the molecules going back up as you see. So what's going down is some of the water plus gravity. What's going up are the air molecules here. And the air molecules in this case are stronger than the water molecules going down plus gravity. And as a result, it stays there. Is that spinning around in there? Yeah, it's now stopped because now what you've got is a tiny little vacuum. So there's nothing going down now. There might be a small little bit of water ah. on top. But there's nothing pressing down on it now except a little bit of water in the pipe. You still get all the water molecules going up in that direction. Therefore, it doesn't move, which is pretty impressive. So I take it out. Nothing magic about it. But look at this. That's Bernoulli, right? We're going to try one more on this clip. We're now going to move on to resonance. Defined as a transfer of energy between two objects. Hmm? Yeah, turn it off. Put it out there, out of the way. Uh, this is where I have to turn them into safety and wear glasses. Where do I do my glasses? Here we go. I don't need that yet. Transfer of energy between two objects which have the same natural frequency. You're familiar with the wine glasses. You rub your finger around the wine glass. It's got a natural frequency. It blings at its natural frequency. So it's going in and out at so many hundred times a second. That's called so many hundred hertz. Alternatively, you can make it vibrate like this. In this case, as my finger is running along it, it's actually bumping up and down. And if I get the speed at which it bumps up and down to match the speed at which the glass moves in and out, you've got a transfer of energy between my finger and the wine glass. And as a result, the wine glass moves in and out more, and as a result, it moves in and out to the extent that we can hear it. You can do it with different types of wine glasses. It doesn't take a wine glass. It will work with any object, which you can force to vibrate if you match the natural frequency of the object. This one, you've, I'm not sure if you've seen this before or not, take an aluminium rod. It vibrates at its natural frequency. What is its natural frequency? It's just a bit like that there. So that at the moment is going in and out. Now, if I can rub my finger along it such that my finger goes up and down at the same frequency at which the rod goes up and down it, what will happen? Oh, it will resonate and you should, it should become a little bit louder. In this case, in order to make sure I got that what's known as a slip slide effect, because it's going along slip sliding, I just put a little bit of resin on my fingers. So it just helps me. I want to put this in the middle, which I'll explain afterwards. No big deal. Impressive? Yeah. 
Spoiler, I've got it here. <laughs> I'm gonna take over that just once there. I mean, yeah, I didn't run out of here. I'm still looking at it. <laughs> Only problem is it's making a bit of noise, so okay, it's just about stopped. All right, a couple of different things to notice. Let's get it vibrating again. As soon as I stop it, that's all it takes. Because it's going up and down like that, as soon as you clamp it shut, it can no longer vibrate. So it demonstrates that it is actually vibrating. The next thing you can do with this, remember your Doppler effect? Yeah, it is vibrating. Just by waving it like that, you find a difference in tone. Or even, if I do something like I don't hear any difference. You hear a difference? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so change in frequency as it's going towards you or away from you. And finally, you've got one mode of vibration. You've got a standing wave set up here, right, where you've got nodes and antinodes. I don't know where the nodes are or where the antinodes are, but I know if I change it to about there. Wow. What? Anyone want to make any guesses? It's higher or anything higher. else? Yeah. Uh, anyone? Anything else? What are the higher? Uh, no, no. It sounds louder. It's, yeah, it, it should be about twice as high because in this mm -hmm. case now the standing wave is here and here. So you've halved the length of the wave, so therefore the frequency should be twice as high. You'd have to measure that to find out if it was for, for sure. But I think it should be about twice as high. So three things on resonance, the wine glass, the rods, and this bit here is known as a Reiki tube. Uh, if you've got a flute and you blow in at the right frequency, the air vibrates. In this case, all you've got is a copper tube. I don't know too much more about this works, but there's a little wire mesh inside it. In fact, we could probably take a wire mesh out, but it's pretty much of the same order as a wire gauze. Just a little wire mesh like that. And what happens here, in fact, let's just put it in first and then see what happens. Two, three, two, one. Let's try that again. Three, two, one. Wow! Uh, didn't even get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what's happening here, but obviously the mesh is responsible for creating some sort of a regular vibration, some sort of a regular pattern in there, and you're getting a standing wave going on. It's known as a Reiki tube. I don't know why. Maybe the guy who first came up with it was Reiki. If you move the mesh further up again, further in the tube, and make a different frequency. Uh, good question. One of the things I can do. In fact, I would guess it would. Let's, uh, let's try it like this. It's getting bloody hot. Three, two, one. Sure, that won't change it at all. No, no, yeah. that Probably not. But just in case. Yep. So, you, well, so it has to be down here, and I would imagine you have to push it up. You must get it slightly different. There's no reason why you couldn't push it up. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's not actually acting as a stopper as such, so it's not actually the end of the tube, so it probably wouldn't make a difference. I'm, I'm not, not too sure, but I'm guessing. Let's put that up there, so nobody else touches it. That will do for resonance and Bernoulli. We will move on to something else in a second. You're going to shut that off.